Welcome guys, stay giga chat. Today in this video, I'm gonna roughly cover about the spec Soul Eater. Then let's get started. Soul Eater is a class that uses Scythe as her weapon. She is a free positional class and she is relatively easy and also very strong. And about her tankiness, her HP coefficient is 2.1 and her defense is 95%, which is relatively a low tier but still higher than uh, those like Reaper or Sharpshooter kind of groups. It also has high destruction and a decent amount of stagger. Okay, so let's talk about her identity, but before we go over on her identity, we have to know about her skills roughly. If you see here, there are some purple looking skills, green looking skills, and pink looking skills. The purple skill are called slaying skill or like slayer skill. Not sure how it's gonna translate in the official like global version, but yeah. Uh, for the green skill, it's called the necromancy skill. And lastly, for the pink one, it's called the reaper skill. You can see that her identity have two kind of stuff. Uh, first one is these three stones here. And second one is this meter bar. Whenever you use the purple skill, for instance, I have my Q skill is purple skill, then it increases the stone like that. It does not increase the bar. Whenever you use the green skills like WERA, then it increases both of the stone identity and the bar identity. Just like that. And lastly, uh, for the pink skill, you need some identity stone to use it. Like for each of the pink skill, you have to consume one stone from the identity. And when you land it on the mob, then it increases the identity bar. Just like that. So purple and green skills are the actual skills that build the identity. And pink skill are the skills that are actual DPS skill that consumes the identity stone. And what happens if you get the full identity meter like this? Uh, it's like a like igniter or like you know Punisher uh, Slayer. Uh, when you click Z, then you will go into a berserk mode. And in this mode, uh, you get 20% of crit rate, 20% of movement speed, and 10% of attack speed. So let me activate it. You go like this. And when you use three times of the pink skills, then your berserk mode ends. But you do a lot of damage during the berserk mode like that from the pink skills. And by the way, Soul Eater's party synergy is 6% damage. And when you go into the Berserk mode, then it applies to the mob for 10 seconds of the 6% damage like this. Okay, let me talk about the class engraving this time. This is a spec build and spec build runs this class engraving. Let me tell you what it does. First of all, it increases your crit rate by 14% all the time. And another thing is that, do you remember that whenever you use the DPS skill, the pink skill, it only gave you the meter when it landed, right? But with this class engraving, whenever you use the skill, it gives you a meter. And also when it lands, it gives you a meter again. So basically like double, if you see, I'm gonna use it right now, then you will see it increases like that. And then it, when it lands, it increases more like that. There are more options that class engraving provides when you're in the berserk mode. So first of all, uh, let's say that I have the full meter. Okay, so let's say that I used all the pink skills, so they are all on cooldown like this. With the class engraving, when you activate Z, then it resets all the cooldown of the pink skill, just like that. And during this mode, your damage of the pink skills gets increased by 15%. And also, when you use the three skills and end the berserk mode like this, then your cooldown of the pink skills gets reduced by 70%. So you can tell that the cooldown of the pink skills are already back. For the gears, you run either Nightmare or Hallucination, depending on your situation. For the Nightmare, it has higher potential. And not just because it actually gives the higher potential of the damage, um, when you go into the boundless mana, then your skills cooldown becomes really short so that it becomes easier to build the meter faster, right? The problem is the crit rate because the crit rate of the soul eater when you run nightmare is around 60% because 
Um, your substat as a crit gives you around 20 something percent, in my case 24. And you can see that this level 3 class engraving gives 14%, which I mentioned earlier. So that's already like 38%. Adrenaline 1 gives 5, so that's 43. And last 20% comes out from the berserk mode, so that's around 63%, right? If you run hallucination, then you just have to add 28 from there, so that's around 90%. So I would recommend you to run Nightmare when you have at least one crit party synergy. If not, then run Hallucination. All right, now let me go over to the stats. For the stats, you normally run full spec and then substat as a crit. What does the spec do for Soul Eater? It increases the damage of the skills when you're in the Berserk mode by a lot, like 146% in my case. And another options are it increases the identity meter efficiency, like basically faster meter gain. And lastly, awakening damage. Okay, let me go over to the engraving this time. For 5 times 3 you run class engraving, raid captain, adrenaline, king blunt, grudge as level 3. As 5 times 3 plus 1, then you lower the adrenaline to 1. And for the last spot, you run either headmaster or supercharge or curse doll. Let me describe each of the engravings. King Blunt. The efficiency of the King Blunt is 21% damage output when you're in the Berserk mode. So that's more than Grudge. And when you're not in the Berserk mode, then it's around 18% damage increase. This is when your crit rate is around 90% with the hallucination. Um, the thing is, according to the research in the event, the DPS proportion uh, between non-Berserk you know, Reaper skill damage versus Berserk mode, Reaper skill damage is 39 to 61. So when you apply that to the damage efficiency, then the overall damage output from the King Blunt becomes around 20%, which is very high, and you need this engraving. This time, let's talk about the Raid Captain. So you have to calculate the movement speed. You get 12% from Swamp of Yearning level 3 from the supporter. You get 5% from Event Feast if you have it, and you get more movement speed from this purple skill at level 5 of this tripod, it increases 19.2% movement speed for 8 seconds, which is crazy. So that's already 36% and the damage output is around 16%. This is non-berserk mode by the way. If you go into the berserk mode, you get additional plus 20, so you get capped to 40% movement speed, which is 18% of damage output. So in general, in uh, one run of the raid, uh, the damage output of the raid captain is around 17%, which means it's a very good engraving that you have to take. So it's one of those classes that does not have to run any swiftness, but still gets very high efficiency of raid captain. Lastly, let me compare Headmaster versus Curstall versus Supercharge. Headmaster versus Curstall. TLDR, they do similar damage increase, but there are pros and cons. Headmaster does not affect the awakening damage, but Curstall does. And secondly, there's this one of the Reaper skill. Um, if you see this tripod right here, this tripod turns the back attack of this skill into free positional. Uh, so if you run the Headmaster, then you have to run this tripod. But if you run Curstall, then you don't have to run this tripod. And you can just run this one that gives tenacity to this charging skill, which makes it safer to land. But there are also downside on Curse Doll. Curse Doll increases attack, not damage. And most of the attacks are additive, not multiplicative, which is less efficient. Uh, so what happens is that you know there are a lot of attack increase on the from the elixir that you will get with the Votus in December. And also when you use Atropin during the burst, Atropin increases attack, not damage. So that also becomes additive. So during the burst time, you might actually do less damage than having a Headmaster. For me, if I try to recommend you guys, just do it like this. If you have, if you learned the legendary, you know, book from for Headmaster, or if you have Headmaster on your stone, then run Headmaster. If you have Curse Doll on your legendary book or on your stone, then just run Curse Doll. Okay, let's talk about Supercharge this time. So even if you're running two charging skills out of three major DPS skills, according to the invent research, 
Supercharge actually does like around 3% less damage compared to Hitmaster and Curse but there are a lot of pros of Supercharge. First of all, it is very cheap. Second of all, um, it makes the skills very faster. And lastly, you can run the Tenacity Tripod on this skill just like the Curse Doll. By the way, for mass increase, I do not recommend it over this last spot because um, the attack speed deduction, you can actually feel it when you're doing the raid um, by missing you know, a lot more skills. This time, let me go over to the skills. The first skill is a purple skill that's called Lunartic Edge. And if you see the tripod, the first one is a party synergy. By the way, Soul Eater's party synergy is 6% damage. The second one increases the movement speed as I showed earlier. And last one, it increases damage, but this is not a damage skill anyway. For the rune, you run Purify rune. And you can see the, the party synergies applied. And the thing is, even if you miss it, you can still have the movement speed buff. Like this. But you cannot apply the party synergy, so you don't want to use it like this most of the time. You want to land it on the boss. And the skill cooldown is actually really short. I'm running only level 7 cooldown gem without any swiftness, but it's it starts lower than like 8 seconds. And as you see here, the duration of the movement speed is exactly 8 seconds at level 5, and the party synergy is 10 seconds, so it's really a good skill. This party synergy cannot be stacked with the party synergy that's applied by going into the berserk mode, but it can renew the duration time. So if I go Berserk mode, then it applies the Party Synergy. And if I use this Party Synergy skill, then it just renew it, but it, they do not stack. The next skill is called Gluttony. This skill has level 1 Destruction, and it's a counter skill. For the first tripod, it increases the Identity Meter gain. Second one gives Tenacity. And the third one decreases the cooldown by 4 seconds. But the problem is, there's a debuff that increases the incoming damage by 3% for 8 seconds, and this can be stacked up to 4 times. Since there's one more skill that provides this same side effect, um, this stack can be easily stacked up to 4. That's one of the reasons why I would recommend you to run Purify Rune on this Lunartic Edge skill to consistently um, purify the debuff. For the rune, you run Quick Recharge. Let me show you how it looks like. You can see that it gives you a debuff stack, and let's say that you're going to use it again, then it stacks like this. The next skill is called Soul Drain, which is a holding skill. This skill provides a lot of meter gain. The first tripod increases the meter gain, second one turns this holding skill into a normal skill, and last one increases the meter gain of the stones, not the bar. For the rune, you run Epic Wealth Rune. The next skill is called Death Order, and it's a meter gain skill. The first tripod increases the meter gain, the second one increases the damage, and the third one increases the damage as well. For the rune, you run Legendary Wealth Rune. The next skill is called Astaros. This skill has level 1 destruction, and it has decent stagger. Also, it builds a lot of meter gain. For the first tripod, it decreases the mana consumption. Second one allows the skill to move forward and also increases the meter gain of the bar. Last one decreases the cooldown by 8 seconds, but there's a debuff stack that I you know, told you earlier on this gluttony skill, same. So it can stack and it gives you incoming damage um, increase by 3%. The rune, you run Epic Wealth Rune. For the next skill, it's a DPS skill called the Guillotine Swing. It has level 1 destruction and a decent stagger. The first tripod, you can pick either two of these. Uh, this one increases the destruction level to 2, and this one increases the stagger. For the second one, you can run either this one, which increases um, damage with faster animation, or this one right here, which increases more damage with uh, slower animation. And last one, you go for this one that increases the identity meter gain and also the damage. For the rune, you run legendary focus rune. So if I show you the one with the faster animation, looks like this. 
it crosses like that. And the one that is slower, but you know, more damage, it looks like this. You can see that it drops way, you know, slower. So um, you might ask, why don't you just run Gale Wind in that case? But the Gale Wind doesn't affect that much of the drop of the Scythe. Um, let me try it. So this is a legendary Gale Wind. I'm gonna, uh, you know, swap it like this. And if I use it again, it literally doesn't show any difference. The next skill is called Soul Sinners. This is a DPS skill and it has decent stagger. This skill is a back attack skill, but if you see the first tripod by running this, um, you can turn this back attack skill into free positional skill. As I told you, you run this when you run Hitmaster. And also um, it increases some you know amount of stagger as well. And this tripod is the tripod that you run when you're running either Supercharge or Curse Doll over the Hitmaster. Um, gives you tenacity. So you can pick either one of these two. For the second tripod, you go for this one right here that changes the skill into a charging skill. And for the third one, you go for this one that increases meter gain and also the damage. For the rune, you definitely want to go for Legendary Gale Wind. So it looks like this. The next skill is also a DPS skill called Vestige. And it has level 1 destruction, its stagger is decent. For the first tripod, it decreases the mana consumption. The second one turns this skill into a charging skill. And the third one uh, makes this skill able to be used twice a time. So it's like a you know, two stack skill. Yeah, and for the rune, you run Legendary Gale Wind since it's a charging skill. It looks like this. You might say that both of the skills are kind of slow when you use the charging tripod, but uh, this is without the Swamp of Yearning, so in the reality, it's gonna be like this. Uh, you wanna run uh, these two debuff, level 1 and level 3 Spirit of Shortion. And also, when you go into the burst mode, you get 10% attack speed. So if I go into Berserk mode, then look at the charging speed of these two skills. Lastly, the Awakening. The first Awakening has level 2 destruction with high stagger. Also, when you use it, then it builds all the meter of the stone, but it doesn't build the meter for the bar. The second one has high stagger with no destruction, but it is stronger than the first Awakening when it comes to DPS. So this is a preference. If you want uh, if you want to fit out this you know, stronger skill into the DPS rotation, then you want to go for a second one. Um, if you want to kick off with faster rotation, then kick off with the first awakening. If I show you, the first awakening is like this. Look at the stone meter. And you can kick off with, you know, using the pink skills right away like this. And if I show you the second one, the second one looks like um, this. When it comes to priority of tripod, you want to prioritize on DPS related tripod and the meter gain tripod and the movement speed increase tripod. So DPS you know, related tripods are these three skills. Uh, this one, this one, so that's two. This one, this one, that's four. And this one and this one, that's six. And for the meter gain, you know, tripods, this one, this one. And this one, they all look same, right? And lastly, the movement speed increase on this uh, purple skill. This one right here. Let's go over to the gems. For the gems, there are two kinds of ways to run it. Uh, first one is running three attack gems on three pink skills and the rest of eight uh, cooldown gem on every eight skill. Or you can also run like, um, you can remove the cooldown gem on this pink skill, Soul Sinners, like this and add um, attack gem for Astaros. This skill right here. Like this. Finally, let's go over to the rotation. The rotation is pretty simple. You just have to spam the skills, build the time 6 of Adrenaline engraving, and then build the meter. When it reaches full meter, then activate Z, and then burst 3 pink skills, the DPS skill. And then repeat again and again. Build meter and burst, meter and burst. 
One thing that you have to be aware is this purple skill, Lunartic Edge, because it provides party synergy and the movement speed, right? So you want to use this before you use the pink skills to have high efficiency of Rage Captain. Or another way is that if you have this skill, Guillotine Swing, on, then you can use this skill and then use the Lunartic Edge. It still affects the, the Rage Captain um, on this skill because this Guillotine Swing has um, slow animation. Watch. See, the guillotine swings after you got the movement speed buff. In this way, you have more time to fit three pink skills in duration time of the movement speed. And by the way, when it comes to the power of the pink skills, this skill, guillotine swing, is the strongest skill. This one, soul sinners, is the second strongest. And vestige, this last skill, is the last strongest. Now, let me go over to the rotation. Well guys, that's all for today and hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, then please hit the sub because that will help me a lot. For the next video, I will come back with the swift version of the Soul Eater guide. Then see you guys on the next video. Stay Giga Chad.